This is a 54-year-old male who presented to the emergency room with a swollen left arm. His remote history approximately six weeks ago revealed a motorcycle accident and he sustained a large bruise over the left clavicular region. He did not seek medical attention at this point. Today, his girlfriend was lying on his arm for approximately four hours. His arm became quite swollen and he came to the emergency room. No ultrasound was performed, but rather a subclavian venogram was obtained and you can see that the subclavian vein is occluded with reconstitution of the innominate vein. From a left-sided approach, we placed a multi-side hole catheter and started infusion of TPA at half a milligram an hour. The patient was brought back to the interventional suite the next morning, and you can see that there is a high-grade stenosis in the subclavian vein just before it joins with the innominate. This was then angioplasty to 10 millimeters. As you can see at this film, just behind the balloon there is irregularity of the clavicle raising a question of a previous clavicular fracture that may be forming an extrinsic compression on the vein. Follow-up studies revealed improvement but not significantly and I decided to continue this TPA overnight again. The patient received another 24 hours of TPA, was brought back to the angio suite, and as you can see, has reoccluded the subclavian vein. An echos catheter was placed across the occlusion. It was infused for another six hours, brought back to the angio suite, and you can see that the high-grade stenosis remained. At this point, the procedure was terminated, the patient's arm reclotted, and he was discharged home with instructions to wear an arm sleeve, and he eventually developed collaterals that allowed the swelling to go down. At my insistence before discharge, the patient had a CT scan, and you can see the bony defect at the inferior aspect of the clavicle, and on reconstructions visualized here as well. This is an example of an extrinsic compression of the subclavian vein causing subclavian vein occlusion. This would not be helped with a stent due to its position and perhaps a surgical removal of this bony defect will be necessary. For further information or comments, please do not hesitate to contact me at tpmmd at hotmail.com. Thank you for your attention.